Welcome, ladies and gents. I'm Dan the Manmunoz, host of Movie Menu Interviews, where we interview up and filmmakers who discuss their films from idea to completion. On today's episode, we'll be interviewing actress-producer Rachel Mullins. So I'd like to welcome Rachel to the show. Thank you so much for being here. We greatly appreciate you being here. Thanks for having me. It's super <laughs> fun in your in your in your lair in your com- <laughs> in, in your command kid. center <laughs> in our nerd central. Yeah, it is, it is nerd central for sure. Um, so just to give a, a, a brief background on why we do the show, it's basically to discuss for future filmmakers out there who are interested in getting into the business. Um, and talk about what worked for you as uh, someone in the business and what you would change for a, a next project and any advice you'd like to give to our listeners. So, Rachel, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Like, where did you grow up and, and all that good stuff? All that good stuff. I'm originally from Detroit and I stayed there for until I was about 19. And I was because I started modeling when I was 12. So I was getting dispatched, I say, to like different markets and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was just buzzing around all over the place. And I kept coming to L.A. like really heavily for like a five month period. And then I was like, I'm not going back. <laughs> <laughs> like L.A. is now my home. Yeah. It's like I live I live I live in this hot tub and this hot tub happens to be located in Los Angeles. So I'm going to stay in here and. <laughs> I don't want to go to LAX anymore, so I stopped going. <laughs> nice. Never looked back. Yeah. And so you talked about getting into modeling as a teenager or a preteen. How did you get into acting? Into acting? This is kind of a crazy story. So We love crazy stories here. Uh, it's, it's a bizarre story. So lo and behold, my neighbor across the street was a director dp and he's an incredible art wayne's an incredible artist too like he's one of those like old school people that still like draws his movie posters and stuff like Uh. he's a really interesting cat fantastically talented guy and i didn't know this at the time but i came home from school one day and him and his other grown man friend were throwing a like a bridal bouquet around the front yard like what are you doing (laughs) like two two fully grown grown men just throwing this throwing this bouquet just trying to get it higher you know (laughs) and i'm like and they're and i'm like wayne what are you doing and he's like oh i um i just finished this movie in south carolina but i forgot the bouquet toss like i didn't get that shot so i'm trying to pick it up because he was just trying to get the bouquet like across the the sky that's all he needed and i was like sure you are buddy (laughs) (laughs) and we just kind of became friends and I think he got like a grant or something I forget how he funded this but he wanted to do this short horror movie and he's like you're gonna be the monster (laughs) really (laughs) yeah that is awesome yeah so I had this like crazy makeup and white contacts and and was that your first role that was my first thing was being the 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 boogeyman in some guy's dreams (laughs) 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 and I hated it It, the, the contacts are really painful I'm like no wonder people People get paid so much to do this. That's awful. Yeah, and um, that's interesting because your first role is you have prosthetic makeup added onto you. How yeah. long did that take? It wasn't that bad. It was just to make me look like dreamlike, I guess you mm. could say, like so, a haunt, so, a thing haunting someone's dreams, a lady esque thing haunting somebody's dreams. So that that wasn't too hard. It was the, it was the contacts that really were painful. I think I probably would have had a lot of fun had it had. No contacts. Being. Yeah, <laughs> had colored contacts not been so terrible at the time because right. this was every bit of fifteen years ago. Um, <laughs> they're probably far nicer now, <laughs> but at the time, even the really nice ones were quite painful. I was like, Nah, this is this. Is, mm-mm. Somebody else can do this, <laughs> and I didn't do it for a long time. And then I had been living here for about two years and just modeling, just going around and shooting, 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 shooting. and. I had all these friends that worked on like really looking back on it, like really incredible sets that I'm so fortunate to, to have been invited to. And they'd be like, yeah, just come hang out, like eat our food or whatever. I'm like, Shh, I can do that. <laughs> they got to tell me twice. Yeah. And then that turned into like, oh, we think this costume will fit you or like, oh, just like try this or whatever. And so you it, play dress up? Basically? Yeah. That's, I play, uh, that's dude, awesome. that's if you want to lure me into... <laughs> A, a dark cave or like a back alley I just do dress. it just do it with costumes and i will run screaming into the night basically <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> that's that's how that's that's my weakness it's my kryptonite <laughs> that's basically how we got you here <laughs> <laughs> i was lured with shoes 
talk about the rest of your acting career and how you started with that. Yeah, it just kind of started from that. Like I would, I just kind of got known as like the like Rachel to the rescue, which has kind of been a reoccurring theme in my life. Of like, I ended up replacing a lot of girls on like really good stuff that either didn't work out or didn't show up or they called the night before like "Ah, i'm sick (laughs) and they were like boo you whore and then (laughs) call rachel we'll we'll shove her in here yeah like i'm like the queen of like not being the first choice but i'm there when you're in a jam (laughs) (laughs) you're the reliable one i'm the reliable one i am old reliable rachel And here I am, 18 years later. Now you're taking up producing, so that's yeah. Well, awesome. no, I started producing when I was 19 because I'm reliable, Rachel. And <laughs> talk about your first producing. Uh, My project. first, it's kind of a similar situation. I was it's a, again in a hot tub, except I was in Hawaii, and that's a pretty good hot tub. Yeah, it was. It was a stellar <laughs> hot tub. It was right next to the. There's a hotel that's like next to. The, it's next to the mall, in. Uh, and like Waikiki in a uh-huh. while. <laughs> it's, it's a great hot tub. <laughs> Highly recommend it. Um, yeah, I was, uh, my friend called me. He was like, yeah, I'm doing this pilot for Spike. You should come work on it. And I was like, okay. And that was like basically the end of the, <laughs> the, end of the conversation. It was an all girl paranormal investigation show. Oh, that sounds awesome. And it was, it was gnarly, dude. It was really interesting. So that was the first thing that I had ever produced. And it was really grimy, like shooting, like, it was hard to shoot because you're like out in the woods stomping around. Like gorilla type yeah. style. Yeah. No, it wasn't just like gorilla style. We had locations and like we were semi legit. Oh. We had production insurance. There you and go. We were insured. Actually, you were legit then. Yeah. <laughs> we were insured. We did like Mount Baldy and like we had some really interesting locations. But it was it was definitely grimy though. Like it was really long shoots and we were literally out in the woods, like out in these re- remote locations and stuff like that. So it was hard. And then that went, when that ended, I was like, let's do it again. <laughs> do the next one let's do the next one yeah so then that's what that's kind of when i got bit people say that oh i got bit by the acting bug i didn't i got bit by the producing bug for sure i'm like let's go do grimy things <laughs> <laughs> well what did you learn um when you when you started producing especially that first project that you worked on that you carry with you throughout the rest of your producing i didn't really learn much about physical production then believe it or not I learned a lot about the business end of it Uh-oh. because that deal went horribly awry. And since I'm in the business of spilling tea, I'll just I'll just spill it. Spill it. Okay, so we got an email, and it, nowadays it's like shocking to hear this, but we got an email back from Spike, and they're like, "Yeah, you know, we just don't entertain shows that have a lot of women speaking." What? And I have that in email somewhere. I got the receipts <laughs> <laughs> somewhere. I have the receipts, but that's what they said. We don't really do shows that have women speaking. That's not a thing that we do. So we're like. Okay, but they're no longer a network, and yeah. we're still all around. There you go. So yeah, and then <laughs> take that. Yeah, so then we kind of orbited the social media at the time. Again, this was like ten plus years ago, and we got acquired by a production company that does the ghost shows that everyone knows, and they go goed it onto a shelf permanently uh-huh. for about five bucks and a pack of gum. <laughs> 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 but I learned a lot about your business deal. In that because I'm turns out I'm mouthy and they were kind of like doing some underhanded things but I couldn't fully articulate that because I didn't I could just see the vibe I couldn't tell you specifically why or why not but I could just see the vibe and I was like okay well the faster I can't believe I said this in a meeting the faster you cut a check to go do this the faster we can get it done (laughs) and they were like this bitch needs to go (laughs) (laughs) And but but, this, you, but you need that as a producer. Yeah, you do. So it was kind of one of those teaching moments. Like, yes, if you say that, like you're going to get a reaction and it's either going to be, yeah, that's the situation or it's going to reveal. It's a good litmus test, basically. It I'm is. not saying run out and do it in those words, but it's a good litmus test of like what that other person's intentions are. Mm-hmm. Because if they want to drag their feet and do all the the schmarmy stuff that happens, especially in the unscripted world. Which you see a lot. You yeah, see a lot of that fluff. It. And yeah, whatnot. it happens all the time. So yeah, that's what I learned on that. Wasn't necess- I didn't really gather much about the physical production then, which is kind of weird because I'm really into physical production now these days. But <laughs> my first experience on it, it was, learn- it was learning the deal. But you know, that's something that they don't teach you. They don't no. teach you the business side when you're in school or when you're learning. I never went to school, so <laughs> yeah. I couldn't tell you. But honestly, like, 
I've hired a lot of people from different biz- from different film schools throughout the spectrum of like cheap to like super expensive, and I can't say that any of them were f- sufficiently prepared no. by those schools. So I don't, I don't. And the thing is too, as I I worked on that uh, Roger Ailes story that Charlize Theron produced this year, mm-hmm. and I noticed a little PA at lunch, and I was like, "Oh, are you doing Last Man?" She's like, "Yeah," and she's like, "I'm in school. I've been driving from Orange County to blah 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 blah." blah. I'm like, "Oh my God, <laughs> honey, what are you in school for?" She's like, "Producing," and I'm like, "How do they even teach that? <laughs> like, how do you even begin to teach producing? Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know that that really can be taught. No, it's uh, like an instinct almost. Yeah, it's it's kind of it's like saying you taught somebody. I always c- compare it to being a mom. Like, I don't have kids, but that's that's what it seems like you're just like just doing i just end up saying mom phrases over and over again like oh that it's somebody will come to like oh the director wants to do a company move does the director have company move money oh he doesn't <laughs> like that's the kind or it's like we're gonna go in the permit office you're not getting anything don't ask for anything sit down and don't talk to anybody don't touch anything like those are the kinds of things that i say and i'm like i think i'm just a mom basically like that's, and these are my a- my 60 deep children basically <laughs> that's actually a great uh synopsis of what a producer is it's basically they are the parent of the yeah show. you're the you're the you're the parent of the you're the one with the wallet yeah <laughs> for sure and especially because like yes the director is the captain of the ship because somebody has to be like somebody right. has to have the final say in that but much like when you're making like a tv show like the production company you know like the studio and the network are two different entities and mm-hmm. you know the director is kind of over here and there's a whole multitude of producers and it's like well yeah they're the captain of the ship but they don't have the title to the ship <laughs> right, <laughs> you know what exactly. i mean like their name's not on the title to it so <laughs> you have this whole strange like chain of people that are all involved that's why it's a collaborative it's a medium collaborative. it takes it everybody is. short form digital content's like really my wheelhouse and i think people just started calling me people call me with their problems is what they do <laughs> it's like they're like oh man you're like a personal therapist yeah it's like was, i'm rachel to the rescue like that's just <laughs> i am a donkey i'm the beast of burden that's who the, god you know made what? me to be like that's just basically the people just call me like oh man i really messed up my sag paperwork you should Can really you fix have it? Uh, your own tv show called <laughs> rachel to the rescue rachel to the rescue <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just kind of get these these phone calls of like, oh yeah, um, so we need somebody to do this, or we messed this up, can you fix it? Or I just get calls like that, or people will like find me from the grapevine. I do get a lot, especially acting wise, I get a lot of ominous phone calls. Of like I call, I'll answer the phone, I'm like, is this Rachel? I'm like, yeah. They're like, we heard you do things. I'm like, I do. How much money do you have? <laughs> and they're like, uh, 10% over scale. I'm like, that'll work. They're like, great. Meet us in a dark, a, a dirt parking lot behind an old hospital in Sun Valley. I'll be there. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> and I get in a van with these people. What a lovely business to get into. Yeah. <laughs> so glamorous. So glamorous. I can't really remember the first narrative thing that I produced, but I think it probably, because short form digital contents like my... My, well, let's my talk Jewish. about your commercial and your film and your music videos. How did um, you start doing? How did you transition from working on the reality show esque into like more of a structure, like with the actual crew and not so much reality or, or um, haunting? Well, well, uh, you know, I will say be- just because I didn't learn much on the, about the physical production of that of the ghost hunting show, we did have that. We did have some bomb camera people that I still work with now, you know, on occasion, not all the time. But we had some really, really good people. Like um, this one with Rebecca that we had, she was like BFFs with Renee Zellweger in high school. She was a part of that like <laughs> Austin time of like Austin, Austin. film people mm-hmm. that like came out of there. So she was bomb. I didn't necessarily learn anything from her about like how to physically produce things or like Jamal Bayetti who had shot a bunch of stuff with that with us then i shot with him t- like two weeks ago <laughs> that's great yeah so there there was a camera instructor in that i just didn't learn anything about it at the time to like regurgitate it but yeah i think just t- going from in front of the camera to behind the camera and just kind of like it's like flipping that skill from one side to it's the almost next. like using uh, another part of your brain right like yeah so well to- you you learn things from one side that you can then apply to the other like I, I probably couldn't teach it if to save my life but like from modeling I understand light and f-stops and mm-hmm. things like mm-hmm. that because I think that I say again is like I remember I used to shoot on film and there was no retouching <laughs> you actually had to be good looking you know like so getting the camera getting the shot in camera and not needing like 
all of this post or making or making an image off tops that's worthy of all that post came from modeling and fashion and that rigidity so I think that carried over and gave me a tool bag and a vocabulary of silks and gels and flags and blah 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 and you know the shape of light and stuff like that and colors that came from modeling so i just kind of flipped that with acting to and the, production. yeah to the other side that's, which that's real valuable yeah totally and as you can see you you can get more work that way <laughs> yeah oh absolutely and like thing too like i learned a lot about color just from makeup like even the makeup portion of modeling school like when you color correct your face like if you have a zit and it's red green is the opposite of red so you put some green color corrector on there uh. blend that in hit it with some concealer over the top and away you go no. you're back <laughs> you're, to, you're back to neutral yeah so understanding like the color wheel and stuff like that so if you know who's the opposite of who and you know what works out or whatever that even that makeup knowledge translates to the other side of the camera that's awesome talk about anything that if say someone came to you and was like hey Rachel I want to get into producing like what do you recommend what tips would you be able to give them or what would you say go don't do it run away <laughs> <laughs> or, I would say, yeah I would, I would be like why do you want to do this first of all because it is a pseudo masochist kind of a thing it's like why do we do this to ourselves this is a very strange psychological pattern that we all fall into but if they do have a good reason and they don't think it's like a glamorous thing where you like sit in a chair and like yell at people or whatever <laughs> um, or whatever they think it is like what do you think producing is and then if they're like oh well I want to blah 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 I'm like okay okay if you want to get into it, I would say, like, find your tribe and just find somebody who's not a moron and is willing to teach you or be patient with you and ask questions. I just this whole week I've been working with, like, kind of a full spectrum of people that are, like, don't really know to people who are absolutely spectacular <laughs> at their craft and they're, like, beyond well-seasoned. I mean, I got to work with Amy Vincent, who DP'd Hustle and Flow and Black Snake Moan and That's a lot awesome. of other amazing things. And Natasha Brayer, who I'm sure I'm butchering her name, but she DP'd Neon Demon and is amazing. And I got to have a color wow. lesson from her and her inventions of light that she has made. And Peter She's Moss. She's a great DP. Yeah, like, wow. like a lot of uh, amazing people and like newbies. But the if you want, if you're going to be new, which if somebody's going to be new, you're going to be brand new at some point. Like just be willing to have the self-awareness that you're brand new. That's the first hurdle. And then the second hurdle is getting in touch with people who do know what they're doing and they are willing to impart knowledge. Yeah, into. yeah, and to teach you in a way that is helpful to both of you. Because I think there's a lot of people that enjoy teaching, but they don't necessarily, like some people are better teachers than others. Some people are, are more yeah, but just social a, than others. Yeah, like, but a more of a safe and a safe environment, somebody who's in a place in their life where they have the space to allow that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. But we all have to do that for like everything. Like I'm not a big, especially after all this Aunt Becky situation, like I'm not a big, super big cheerleader of like higher education and like artsy kind of situations. Because again, I don't think you can teach some of this stuff, like not in a classroom anyway. Mm -hmm. Maybe if they, maybe if their classrooms were sets and locations and like really thought out but I think that's why there's so many people that have popped up recently that are like giving master classes or doing little YouTube courses or whatever that actually have the real knowledge like go look for those people I think if you're going to go looking for anybody like start there have have a have a real YouTube binge fest and right. then take that or you know what I used to watch a lot of is back in the day is the bonus features on DVDs and just watching commentary like commentary. You'll, that's great you'll yeah. pick up a, it's it's old school but it works but you'll pick <laughs> up a lot of especially because it's most of the time it's like really seasoned people that are right. doing the commentaries like really serious especially tidbits. the directors and, yeah. and producers you know you probably saved like if people listen that you save people like thousands hundreds I of thousands certainly of dollars hope so. <laughs> like if and if really too like if you're like i'm gonna go to film school and i'm gonna blah blah blah, blah i would honestly i would say take that money that you were going to spend in film school and actually go make something because money talks and bullshit walks. So if you really want to produce something, produce get, it. Yeah, do it. That's, that's and just it just sponge it. Just find the right people and and sponge off because there's people that paid tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars for their education, and they would have um, come out the other side of it far better had they just used that money as an investment. Mm -hmm. 
and whatever because then you have something to show for yourselves and now like we're living in an era where you have to be able to plug into the algorithm because all we do we, we do valuations based on an algorithm it's not like feelsy schmealsy anymore like mm -hmm. oh maybe yeah i could see that doing good or yeah that that person's kind of cool or they've got a good body of work or whatever like there's no feeling in it it's literally just an algorithm that they plug in names to mm -hmm. it's like i tell people it's like um when real estate agents put a valuation on a house oh, yeah. or a building like they're looking for comps in the neighborhood right. bedrooms and bathrooms like all those yeah. little components as a whole make up that valuation and they may or may not be right like it's just a, on paper it, it could be arbitrary it Who could knows? be arbitrary it might be the hottest thing ever or we all know there's been plenty of movies that cost a fafillion dollars that fell slap on its face mm -hmm. and they were like we can't understand why <laughs> <laughs> you know it's like well the algorithm failed you yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's okay but yeah if you can get something if you can make something where you're going to get a paper value or a body of work that you can be like well i made this thing and we put it here that is infinitely more powerful than i went to film school in x y and z that's awesome because especially on the west coast people are gonna be like okay who have you worked with? Yeah. That's the, that's the only real question anybody asks is like, oh, who have you worked with? Because they need to check on you. Yeah. But they're happy to check on you in paper, though, of like, oh, you made X amount of dollars on this? Wonderful. Fantastic. Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's, it's also, even though it's a big business, it's still a small world. It's the biggest small world. In the, like, physically, it's very large. But, like, intellectually, it's, it's a very so small, small pool of people. So it's all about the networks you make as well. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, I think, people kind of take that with a, a negative connotation of, like, oh, it's all about who you know. Like, you have to know people. Yeah, you do. You you have you definitely have to network and put your name out there and be like, hi, I'm so-and-so and I do this. Like, when I first lived in L.A., I did... 14 to 16 hours a day just out in the world just bopping around <laughs> being racial to the rescue you know <laughs> tracking up on sets and eating their food <laughs> turning or, their clothes on yeah their you, you know what i used to do too is like once i got like a little pool of people together that i was like we're gonna be best friends and you can't get rid of me um <laughs> like once a month i would make like rice crispy treats and like caramel apples and like all this <laughs> stuff and i would like bag it up and i would just have a day where I was like bunny foo food these people's offices and just like went <laughs> <laughs> dropping treats and scripts off at her you know whatever it's like oh did you here's these rice crispy treats like oh did you hear so and so was doing this and blah 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 you know like just slide <laughs> it in where you can yeah genius when you're working at projects currently what makes you want to pick like what draws you to a project now people because I'm a really, re I'm really, really, really fearful of psychopaths. Because after you've spent a certain amount of the time in this town or in this business, you've had a lot of psychopath exposure, <laughs> and you try to figure out how to limit it. And there's a people call and like, is this person crazy? Are they a nut? Are they sane? First of all, because that's kind of few and far between. Yeah. Are they sane? Do they have money? Those are my, those are my two big factors because i'm i know a lot of people are like oh the script or the craft and blah 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 i don't consider myself a very artistic person like i'm really more of a business person if i'm being totally honest mm -hmm. so i'm not really emotionally attached to like what's on the page like sometimes i'll really like it but those moments are really few and far between and it's no reflection of that Project. script or mm -hmm. whatever it's just i don't have that within me to give i just don't i wish i did i wish i was one of those people that was like oh but the this and the that and the blah 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 like i'm, <laughs> I'm just not like i'm just not i would be terrible at movie reviews i'm like it was cute the end like <laughs> <laughs> it was whatever like, I guess there's certain things that I can dissect and talk about, but... No, but that's great because, you know, that's one aspect that isn't talked about a lot is the business side of it. So it's all about the craft. It's all about the art. Yeah. That's, all, that's what people focus on. But there's an underbelly of a, of a business there. Yeah. That's what it's called. You know, it's called uh, Hollywood it's business. The, yeah, it is it is the entertainment industry. Yeah. It's an industry. It's a machine. Mm -hmm. It's got It has to produce and crank out money. That's what it's for. It's not for anything else really yeah, <laughs> like they're, they're, they're in it to make money yeah if we're being honest so and like as a culture like america's two biggest exports is weapons and entertainment so we got to come in with half right <laughs> basically <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I'm, I'm not like one of these big artistic people it's just one of those things is like are the people involved sane and do they have some kind of money for this because i worked in finance a long 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 time ago and it put a lot of gray hairs on my head and I don't like doing it I'm capable of doing it but I don't like doing it there's people that love that 
mm-hmm. situation. They love doing road shows and they love making those calls and doing doing, doing the, the dance and, and blah 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 blah. I love putting a budget together of like, and that's what I get. I do get a lot of calls and emails for that. I was like, can you do my budget? Can you do my top sheet? Because I do budgets like a single mom. If it's not on sale, you're not getting it. So. <laughs> Is this no two for ones? Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> it's not buy one, get one free. Put it back. Put it back. Put it back. So, that is a, a, another thing is like people call me because they're like, we only have blah, 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 blah. And like, if you do have blah, 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 I'll consider it. Like, I'll be like, okay, yeah, you can work without her. Like, no, you're going to need whatever. You know what? You should do a union minimum. Or a lot of times I talk people into spending less money. Like, you know, if you use all this over here, like, it'll cover. You're going to have to make all that back. Like, you need to, to, to cool your jets yeah. <laughs> i do dial quite a few things and of like no 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 we're gonna rein that in <laughs> um of like no you don't need to do that or you don't need to get this expensive person you can do this cheaper you can do that cheaper spend your money on the screen if it's not being seen on screen you better have a damn good reason to be doing it like so and sometimes you have to like you have to get a studio teacher because you have a minor actor or whatever like and that's that's fine those are rules that we have for a reason and do that but like don't be out here spending money just for the sake of doing it or just for the sake of comfort because you have to make that money back Mm -hmm. and it's going to be equally uncomfortable to have to go meet to have to go jump over this hurdle that you've already set yourself up for so I do dial a lot of people's budgets back but yeah I do have people email me like hey can you do a top sheet or can you do a budget or whatever and I typically do a lot of budgets that involve my people and that's how like I can get you lower is because I can negotiate those kinds of things and a lot of people I think make the mistake of trying to get a line producer initially and then they're like okay great we did the budget and then like they want to run off later down the line and like try to make that budget fit and like no you gotta call me back because i have to facilitate this for you now like Mm -hmm. you it's i don't have a comparison for it but like you can't just like i think you yeah Yeah. like you can't just like replicate it and like those are people that are in that budget it's not just numbers yeah, it's not, it's like lightning. It doesn't strike twice. Yeah. It's really like something like you have to individually coach totally. every single project. Yeah, I've, and I have this thing of like, I make a lot of stuff over hiatuses because that's when people are cheaper because they need work. Mm-hmm. So that's an option for you to make things cheaper too is just the time that you shoot. And I've had people do want to do that. i like, yeah, 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 we'll totally do that. We'll shoot over hiatus. And then they'll push into January. Like, you're not in hiatus anymore. Now we got to go back and renegotiate this and it's going to be more expensive because people don't want Christmas money anymore. Mm-hmm. So, and they're back in their full swing right. of work. So now we have to rework, retool this. Can for- you, for listeners, uh, for the listeners out there, uh, describe what a line producer is and also what a top sheet is? Okay. A top sheet is, a top sheet varies. Um, but most of the time, like say you have a film that you want to get financed, that top sheet is going to be all of your numbers. Your It's like your inputs and your outputs of like all the money that you're going to have to put in to each and every department and all the money that's going to come out of each and every department respectively those are kind of hard to explain without a visual because some top sheets are better than others but for line producing line producing is is your budget person who says this department is going to get x percentage or we're going to decide an overall budget and then line by line that's where the line comes in line by line which unlike any spreadsheet that most people have ever seen, right. um, every single line has to have every penny of that proposed budget accounted for up to and including your slush fund because you're going to go over on something and you need to have some padding. Mm-hmm. So that's the basics of line producing. Nice. And now when you start with producing on projects, are you focused also on hiring the crew? Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I, in my opinion, line producing, UPMing, goes hand in hand with that and where do you normally find your crews for your for each shoot that you work i on? have my little my little stable of people <laughs> in, your, in your handbag yeah <laughs> for sure like i have my i have my people and that's one of my things that like again it goes like back to being a mom like you have the same people like by and large like over and over again and i hope i know who likes which color gatorade <laughs> and who wants sprinkles on their donuts and who wants nuts on it you know things like that but like, it seems like that'd be a small thing but it's huge oh, like, people it's, appreciate that yeah it's it's a huge thing like my craft service is that of legend in this town (laughs) if i make any mark anywhere it's in the snacks department (laughs) for sure (laughs) at my funeral one day they'll be like and she did a great garlic pita chip and hummus hummus spread it was that of legend she wouldn't be missed (laughs) but always remembered (laughs) she will always be remembered by her hummus varieties 
Uh, you talked about working with people who are not e- the easiest to work with. Yeah. What advice do you give when you are somehow find yourself on a project with someone like that? Because uh, like, <laughs> you're essentially the person in charge, right? Yeah, I would say, I mean, for an overall situation, like if you're in bed with this situation, is don't let that as that commitment escalate. Like once you start seeing red flags, as hard as it in, try to like whack a mole them and like bop it back down and be like no or we can't be doing that or like and the thing is too is like don't get too caught up in the explanation because like when people are like why 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 in in that variety it's most of the time because they're trying to get you caught up in this like emotional turmoil of response and that's what they're like getting off on or maybe even using your words against you yeah yeah or like in thing is is like explanations take time dude and time is very expensive in this town (laughs) it's very very expensive so especially if you get to set and somebody's like it's like no we're not doing that and just keep it going or i will say like just like in general in life i asked tom green that question a million years ago and i'm like how did you make it through like the things that you have made it through and he's like just wait five minutes somebody else will cuss him out <laughs> I'm like okay that's good advice and if like if you just sit back for five <laughs> minutes someone else will cu- come along and cuss them out and then they're on the hook for it and you're not <laughs> so yeah and that's worked well thanks for t- thanks tom green but yeah <laughs> shout out to tom green shout out to tom green for that <laughs> is there any current projects you're working on that you wanted to talk about current stuff i have a music video that's coming out that we're i think is pretty cool it's kind of like it looks it's not like a regular music video it's kind of has like a little pre movie to it you know, like it, thriller type of thing or? uh not as long as thriller but almost <laughs> but it's a female artist and it looks like Dexter if Dexter were in the 70s and a female rapper like a lesbian female rapper um, <laughs> nice. it's really gnarly she like murders people in it and stuff like it's pretty <laughs> crazy so that's going to be coming out pretty soon and that's taken so much work and post but it will be worth it so we're p- pretty happy with that just doing off color stuff right and trying to like there's nothing new under the sun but just trying to go at least in a little bit in a different direction right i also wanted to ask how do you feel in this industry that there are more projects where are female centric and do you are you happy about that do you think we need to Hollywood still needs to work on more with that i don't know i think we just need to focus on working on the right stuff whatever in whatever banner that falls under like i don't think there's any point in doing it for the sake of doing it just to say that you did it like Mm -hmm. Look at how well Ghostbusters went around with that situation. Mm-hmm. I don't think you need to like shove a square peg into a round hole. Like right. that's that's not necessarily good. Just like not ruling things out. And I think we should all or think, even placating. Yeah, that. there's no there's no sense in doing that. There's mm-hmm. all it's, there's incredible stories just like piled up in people's desks around this town, like mm-hmm. waiting to be told. Like we don't need to like gender bend everything. Like sometimes mm-hmm. it's cool, but most of the time probably not. Like and that stuff like deserves its own story and all of that. But we've gotten into a place where they're just trying to reuse IP as much as humanly possible and I don't I don't personally think it's that expensive to develop new stuff like the Writers Guild minimum hasn't hit some like crazy ceiling (laughs) or something you know like it'll be okay like right it can be done but again that stuff doesn't plug into the algorithm if it doesn't plug into the algorithm because there's no comparable stuff you've got a dead zone and they're very scared of the dead zone yeah so I don't know like I I think just working on stuff that's like oh that's really that's that's something that's a story right there Mm -hmm. and whatever banner it it flies under is totally cool and i think we have orange is the new black to to thank for that and streaming platforms and on top of it because i remember seeing the girl that um taylor what's her face plays she was a waitress at Mm -hmm. the grove and that was her story and she would go around telling all her tables like yeah i wrote the show and it's gonna get done and blah 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 and people were like okay (laughs) and lo and behold it it, got done it got done and it's bomb (laughs) um and they just she moved on to she just did another show with netflix yeah she's she's in the family now and that blew open tons of that it was just an incredible trailblazer of a show like just in that element of alone because like no network on this planet at the time would have touched a ladies in prison tv show (laughs) like that would have not happened but netflix did because they ponied up and people 
love it mm-hmm. and it's not just like a lady show or whatever people love orange yeah, is the Boss new Spectrum, black they love it yeah. yeah people love that kind of stuff so and there and that's i think that's a when you watch the emmys or like any of these award shows like netflix and hulu and amazon are like bringing it home yeah and the 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 premium cable networks can barely keep, keep up, up with them mm-hmm. like they're giving them a real run for their money which is yeah like marvelous mrs Maisel won best comedy, yeah, comedy show in the like, Emmys and they're yeah. they're crushing they're mm-hmm. absolutely crushing and that's that's a hard beast to go up against like to go up against showtime and go up against hbo, HBO. who mm-hmm. had sweet like in their interworkings have sweet deals mm-hmm. because i think i think that deal was recently done but back in the day like even I shouldn't say back in the day, up till fairly recently, HBO was a below scale network and you didn't get paid as you would on a schedule A show somewhere else. Really? Yeah. Because, Spill that tea. Yeah. <laughs> so they but now they have, you know, they're they've made it out of there, but they did their crew contracts and stuff like that before they figured out that like again, this is like a long time thing, that D V D or T V on D V D would make them quite a bit of money. Mm-hmm. So once they got over that hump and then they started really, really kicking stuff out, the unions were like, um, we're going to need to change those contracts. <laughs> <laughs> but for a long time, they got to enjoy this really beautiful place where they were a below scale network and they didn't have to they didn't have to pay as much as other networks did. Right. Believe it or not. So to make to give them a well-established network with a a very cushy situation a run for their money in a completely new frontier like mm-hmm. that's not a joke like that's that's a major that's feat hardcore, of business yeah. yeah that's pretty amazing if you really think about it yeah and they did it on the backs of like stories that are just cool in whatever fashion they come in mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, good on them yeah oh absolutely <laughs> so i think and those movies are making money now that there's comps in the algorithm and people mm-hmm. you know there's there's things for it to to connect the pieces to i think we're going to see more and more of it just on that not because you know it's in the news or whatever but just because there's more in the algorithm for it to latch on to for it to spit out a number right like um more re- representation in that sense. yeah absolutely yeah. yeah which is important what would you see yourself uh working on or your ultimate goal as a producer working at in the future I don't know. I just want to um I just want to be happy on the stuff that I'm working on. Like that's I'm a very selfish person in that way. <laughs> like I go to work cuz It's pretty nice thing to be selfish Cuz I like it. And if anybody else likes it, that's cool, but I don't really care if they do or not. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I kind of like go make things and then basically forget about it, honestly. Like people be like, "Oh yeah, that thing blah 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 blah." And I'm like, "Did I work on that?" <laughs> I can't remember. Oh, you're right. I did. <laughs> like, I forget. Or like sometimes like the names of stuff changes and things like that. I'm like, oh, did they change the name of that again? Or that's called that's something true, yeah. else in some other country or whatever. But yeah, I'm in this for me <laughs> in my own satisfaction, not necessarily that of others. So if anybody else likes it, that's great. It's totally wonderful. But I don't I don't care if they do. Because <laughs> I, I had a fun time on the day. And that was that was the goal, not. Then you did your job. Yeah, well done. Yeah, it's done. It's it's packed up. That's awesome. Um, is there any last minute advice you'd like to give our listeners who, after hearing this, uh, really want to produce filmmaking, really want to get interested in the business of it? What would you impart on them? Be willing to do the work and work on your vocabulary, because I've seen a lot of people fall flat because they didn't have the words in which to communicate their situation for example i do a lot of hand doubling or i have over the years I should, or just parts doubling in general and i used to do it on teen wolf and i got a call from the casting director one day and then she's like how fresh is your manicure i'm like yesterday <laughs> <laughs> and it was expensive it was a good one and she's like okay great i need you to be there at this time blah blah blah, blah. i'm like all right cool let's do this this is b unit day you know you're doing all of your insert shots and blah 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 whatever like okay i get there and i sit there for four hours in my chair doing nothing and then finally a makeup artist comes in they didn't even hire a manicurist for the day which was problem number one and she looks at my nails and i had acrylics at the time that were polished and I thought that we would maybe change them or like match the actress to like figure something out and she's like oh they can't be this long I'm like all right let's cut them and she's like I don't have clippers I'm like what do you mean you don't have nail clippers I'm B unit day which wasn't her fault she's a makeup artist like but they just they didn't 
they weren't tooling up in the way that they should have. And then... And this is MTV. <laughs> yeah. Don't even get me started on these people. Um, but then they were having a time issue, right? Because they sent her in five minutes before they want to do whatever, you know, pushing buttons in the car, like, you know, scrolling through a phone or whatever. And she's like, okay, we're going to have to file them, which is going to... with. On oh any, my gosh. When, on any nail is going to take you long enough, let alone acrylics. Like, you need a grinder. And so we're, now we're at a time issue. <laughs> wow. And, you know, she's like, just going to town with a little tiny emery board, just going to town on my acrylic nails at that, that I don't have anymore but at the time I did <laughs> and the AD's like this is casting's fault they shouldn't have sent me somebody with nails like this blah 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 it's like you asked for a, fr- a fresh manicure that's what you got but you didn't use the you wanted natural nails is what you're short or <laughs> square or just any of these words would have gotten you what you wanted so that he gets on the phone and I can hear him yelling at the casting director of like I said I wanted clean nails and we're like I have the cleanest nails in town they just got (laughs) done you're using the wrong word but you run into these people that can't be told anything right so they they made a series of mistakes and if you don't know how to do that job hire someone else to do it right if you don't know how to communicate what you want in that job go ask somebody or look on youtube or look on instagram or like we need this like reference photos go a very long way Mm -hmm. and we have a little computer in our pockets anyway yeah there's there's kind of no excuse for this and i he was kind of beyond help at this point because he's now he's yelling and everybody's yelling at him because they're ready and they need to shoot this and blah, blah blah like you guys made a series of mistakes but the fact that nobody had the forethought and certainly no one had the vocabulary to articulate even halfway what mm-hmm. they were trying to do then they spent far more money on going into overtime than they would have getting a manicurist or sending a reference photo yeah so life lessons <laughs> <laughs> but i would say yeah if like if you're like not in the business but you want to be look into vocabulary and just try to start gathering your your glossary of terms to use in which to convey your situation and if you don't know what the word for something is, or if you don't know what you're talking about, ask someone. They'll tell you, or secretly ask Google, and Google will probably get you sorted. <laughs> <laughs> or just YouTube it. YouTube yeah, has you, everything. They have everything. They're also killing it. Like, yeah. you, there's help in the world. Like, you don't have to go around out here blind. You don't have to do it. Yeah, save people a lot of money and headaches. Yeah, money and headaches, gray hair time because you can't there's no refunds or exchanges on that like you can't get that back so work on your terms and being okay with being told i get what you're saying but you keep saying this word and i don't think it means what you think it means you know like (laughs) like the princess bride yeah (laughs) he had some really good life wisdom like listen to this man So yeah, that would be my my one piece of advice that probably will work for you if you are or not in the industry is like build up your glossary of terms. Awesome. Thank you so much. Is there uh, anything you'd like to promote or if there's anyone who wants to follow you for your future projects, um, where can they find you? I am everywhere. I'm on the gram at Rachel. uh, No, my Instagram is Rachel Ann Mullins. And then my Twitter, because I like to keep things confusing, is at Rachel A. Mullins. And I do a show called No Filter Friday on Public House Media, where I discuss all things Me Too from inside of Hollywood, where we spill seemingly gallons of tea. Uh, (laughs) And I'm coming up on my 100th episode of that. Ah, congratulations. Which is crazy. I think. Thank you. I can't believe it's been going on that long. And I've been having a lot of guests that are in the how to, like my friend Nicoletta came, who's a sex therapist, and she talks about how to find a therapist if you have been traumatized in some way or Mm -hmm. not, you just want one. And I had a guest today that was like, uh, she's Candy Washington is a she's like a lifestyle wellness mm-hmm. person and like personal empowerment and we talked about how to set boundaries how to say no how to communicate how to use your voice basically right. which is a really big important thing for anybody but especially within that like me too space basically right. like articulating your situation so yeah we're every up until the I'm going to be doing like a whole series on that like up until the hundredth episode of like I have a friend who's a police officer who's going to come and be like how to report x y and z <laughs> like if something happens to you like how to 
how to get law enforcement involved or mm-hmm. how to get a lawyer or how it's going to go in the judicial system or whatever because people are absolutely blind to that and a yeah, lot of people very needed yeah like a lot of people that have they have gone through that personally or they have a loved one that's going for there is no resources for them to like navigate this crisis so that's what i'm trying to do is like just give people the Give people the tools. <laughs> no, what you're doing is you're rescuing them. I yeah, yeah. I, here I am again. <laughs> Rachel to the rescue. Donking people out of here. Um, yeah, basically. So come check out No Filter Friday on Public House Media, and you can get that anywhere. You can get a podcast. So like iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, all those places. Yeah, I would definitely have them in our links as well. So go ahead and check out the links in this episode, and you can find all that everywhere that yeah. Rachel is. All 78, 79, 78, 79, something like that. All the episodes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Um, any last minute things you want to mention? No, uh, I think I, that's my spiel, kids. Uh, that was great. Thank you. Also, make sure to check out our website, moviemaniapodcast.com. Subscribe to us on Apple iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, SoundCloud, wherever you listen to your podcast. If you'd like to be featured on our show, contact us by our email, moviemenupodcast at gmail.com. Again, that's moviemenupodcast with an S at gmail.com. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we'll have we'll be back next week with all new episodes of Movie Menu Interviews. Until then, goodbye.